Hello everyone, I'm teaching you how to draw and read soundings, um, skew tees essentially. First of all, you want to have a date in mind, obviously. You want to have a storm, etc. So for me, I've chosen May 31st, 2010, Campo, Colorado. Uh, one of the most photogenic, if not the most photogenic tornado, um, in my opinion. Um, so here I have radar images from that day and obviously here's the Campo storm you want to go to Google images type skew T log P diagram blank anything of that nature find a blank one this is the one I use due to the fact that it has one degree increments in between the, the 10 degree increments a lot of them you know it'll go th negative 30 negative 40 but it'll be blank in between so when you're plotting it you're kinda guessing um, which can get confusing so I like the ones having you know all the individual increments as well as the um, all the adiabats um, of course and the mixing layer um, and then you need a site where you can get archive sounding data or you know just archive sounding so go to Google type in Wyoming soundings pull up this website um, under type of plot have text list uh, of course year month you know time have your event time in this case the campo tornado was mid to late afternoon so i got the sounding from zero z the next day in utc time which technically is still may 31st but in utc in utc time it would be june 1st at zero z which you know it's standard time central standard time would translate to 7 p.m may 31st so in this case they are the same day in a case where it's you know early afternoon late morning 11 a.m. to 3 or 4 p.m. you're gonna be fine with same day stuff whether it's standard time or UTC time that's a different thing that's not what I'm here to describe what I'm here to describe is how to get the data and plot it so for convenience sake I'm not going to record myself drawing it in person I'm gonna do it in Microsoft Paint I've already got it plotted but I'm gonna run through just so you know how to do it so once you have the date picked out pick a radar site close to it or National Service Office close to it so in this case Dodge City you're gonna click on that give it just a second I'll let it have this so here we have Dodge City observation sounding at 0z June 1st or essentially May 31st at 7 p.m. so here's your raw data to plot this, you're going to go and paint here. See, I'm already a couple steps ahead, so I'm going to slow down here. And you're going to take any of these points. Okay, so let's see. Round that to around 925, so between 900 and 950. Run that over. 925 is. 26.4 degrees Celsius. So here's your degrees. There's 30, there's 20, and it goes down. So 26, there'd be 29, 28, 27, 26.4 is right in between at the line at 925 millibars essentially. Plot that point. That's how you're going to plot every point on this. You can see my points here, 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 here. This is the dew point line. Um, Obviously, I'm still a couple steps ahead. Um, apologize for rushing. I'm just trying to get to the important parts here. But it's real easy to do. You graph it. It's got a, you know, the increments by one. You, it's pretty much just like a normal graph, just skewed. Hence the name skew T. So, say you want to graph 500 millibars at the dew point. The dew point of 500 millibars. Go over here, dew point column. Run it down find 500 millibars. 500 millibars is negative 22.1 degrees Celsius. So go to 500 and find negative 22. So in this case here's a negative 20 line. So negative 21 right there, 22. So right around there is going to be your point. And then of course you plot them and then you, you just draw them like a line um, on a normal graph. So once you've got that graphed up to I 150 millibars is going to work. Um, that's a really that's a good stopping point. Get that finished. Get your temperature, your dew point. Generally, temperature surface temperature is going to be red. 
your dew point is going to be blue. Um, and once you find those, what you're going to do is to find the what's called the parcel process curve, or this line here, this black line that I've lined up, you're going to run this bottom point of the dew point up this line, these these degrees Celsius, this line, this 45 degree line right here, run it up that, and run this other one up to it perpendicular, or run it up Celsius as well, going the opposite direction where they approach each other and eventually collide. Where they hit is going to be the start of your parcel process curve as well as your LCL or lifted condensation layer, the cloud base. So in this case it's going to be roughly 830 millibars and this is determined from graphing. It could be different in the computer. Um, next, on your way up, when you're to take a parcel process curve up as you can see here, run this black line parallel with these green lines, these green lines here, run it parallel with this line all the way up. When you hit, when you pass through the last temperature point, and then you have essentially free air up here, this is a parcel going through air, once it passes this temperature point, this is the level of free convection, it's just free to go pretty much. You can imagine having a little bit of resistance. Once it goes through that, you're set. It's off, and that's your that's your initiation. That's your your pretty much like it says your your uh, level of free convection. It can now storm clouds can now develop at this point and above. This in here, all this open space, that's going to be your cape or convective available potential energy. Um, of course, there's many formulas that go into finding this. I'm not here to show those, I'm just here to show basics of finding some parameters from the reading of a sounding. To find your lifted index, you're going to take the uh, parcel process curve temperature at 500 millibars, so you can see I've got this line here at 500 millibars extending out on the parcel process curve as well as the parcel or the, the temperature, not the dew point, just the temperature at 500 millibars and you're going to subtract the, the parcel process curve temperature from the, um, the 500 millibar temperature right here. So in this case you would get, let's go down to 500 millibars, your, temp your parcel process curve temperature is going to be roughly negative 2 degrees Celsius. Your temperature is going to be roughly negative 11 degrees Celsius. So negative 11 minus, minus 2 is going to be negative 8.5, negative 9, roughly. It'll vary. This is just this is a really quick, easy way to do it. There are more technical ways, but this is generally how you'd find it. Next, continuing up, you're going to, when this parcel process curve runs back into the temperature, it's it's essentially like the storm cloud leveling out. If you can imagine the anvil, the overshooting top up here, your anvil is going to spread out right here. This is equilibrium level. This is where the storm can't grow anymore. It's it's used up all its potential energy. There's none more for it to use. At this point, it spreads out. That's where you see that overshooting top and the anvil. So your equilibrium level is found when the parcel process curve runs back into the temperature. Now, if you want to shade the cape in, go for it. Your convective inhibition, or sin, um, parameter is going to be found by this, the amount of space before you get to the cape. Before you get to the potential energy, you have the inhibition, which storm, you know, storms have to overcome the inhibition to be able to develop, obviously. And a lot of times, um, you know, cape robbers as they call them, um, you have too much inhibition and the storms can never fire because they can't overcome the inhibition. Um, however, a little bit of inhibition is, is a very good thing. You don't want no inhibition because then any storm can go up. You want enough inhibition so that it hinders the development of storms initially and it takes forcing and you know the deepening of the moisture and a higher temperature to finally pop that cap and just shoot up from there and then you know there's your convection there's your storms and then they have all that energy available 
hence convective available potential energy cape um, and if you want a fine cape you just shade in the area between the parcel process curve and the temperature um, like I said these are basic param this is just basic um, knowledge of a skew T um, there's much more detailed ways to find things um, this is what I've learned over the past couple months and this is I found this very convenient it's very accurate like if you look here I've got the equilibrium level at right between 150 and 200 millibars so I'd say 170 175 maybe 180 millibars is where the equilibrium level would be my assumption from the way I graphed it and if you get on here to the information the technical data the equilibrium level right that they have down here is give me a second to find it um, let's see here equilibrium level 180 millibars 100 roughly 180 so like I said 175 to 180 shows up on this so what would your lifted index be like I said you get negative 11 roughly minus a negative 2 roughly so anywhere from I'd say give yourself a range of about negative six and a half to negative nine and a half for lifted in the next level here they have negative six to negative six point seven five depending on whether the computer graphs it or they do it by hand um, obviously it varies um, <clears throat> and you know every minute the atmosphere is changing this sounding is not going to be the exact same one minute later after it's taken so this data changes by the minute um, so obviously your cape could change in a matter of minutes, you know, all these parameters, you know, they don't rely on one time frame, um, they change, you know, all the time. And like I said, I mean, you got your LCL down here that I've graphed, and I'd say it's roughly anywhere from 800 to 850 millibars, um, you know, like I said, this is graphed, the computer is going to do it, you know, much more precisely, they're going to enter every single point. I'm just doing the crucial, you know, not even crucial, I'm just doing enough points to graph it right and to see what it looks like. And so for LCL or lifted condensation level over here, they have 792 millibars, so almost 800, you know, right around the same range. Um, level of free convection, I have about 720, give or take about 30 millibars. They have 690, so, you know, it's it's really accurate for when you're drawing it by hand. This is some really you know this is solid data. This is going to give you a 99% you know idea of what it's like at that moment when you took this you know when you got this information. You got this sounding. Um, obviously, like I said, it's changing by the minute. Um, and uh, this is just a a, a general brief um, you know. Um, running over of these ideas. Um, I don't claim to be an expert or professional. Uh, this is just what I've acquired um, knowledge-wise. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's helpful. It's good to be able to read these kinds of things because you see them and you wonder what they are, you know. And it's really convenient to have the answers. So I um, hope this helped clear up a couple questions. If, um, if you have any other questions, feel free to you know, shoot me an email, comment on the video, um, you know, do whatever you feel like. Uh, if you have suggestions for videos, ideas, you know, shoot them my way. I'm definitely open to talking about them and seeing if I can help. But um, this is a brief overview of skew T log P charts, reading them and finding some data from them. Hope you got something out of it.